just got done working out. But um, <laughs> I came back and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead. Let's go ahead and talk about it, man. Um, how we are choosing, you know, our life partners based upon our horniness, right? Um, whew, we got to kind of stop doing this stuff, man. We're making life decisions based upon how horny we are or whatever and uh it's just not a good thing right i mean we need to be a little more mindful when we uh make a decision as to what type of person we're wanting to make primary in our life now here's the thing though you know what i'm saying like we can have people that we care about that we that we love on and all that but if you're talking about promoting somebody full time in your life based upon how good of a sexual lover they are, whew, <laughs> you're gonna be in for you're gonna be in for some headache for real, like for real, for real. And so I wanna talk about it because I see, you know, I posted that up earlier, like, you know, you don't let your horny make your decisions. You know, man, there's a lot of people out here lonely. There's a lot of people out here in situationships that aren't fulfilling i mean they're cool they're getting you by but they're really not relationships where you're like yeah this is something that i really want to be in full time and then the situationships we're in right they are iffy i mean you can't be accountable for nothing so if they're doing something a little ratchet or they're doing something extra while they're supposedly in a so-called situation shit with you there's really nothing you can do about it right i mean so we're like well you know i don't want to have to be accountable for nothing okay so you want a relationship though see i think you know we get caught up in our horny so much that we don't focus on what we really 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 desire and really 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 need in our life not what we want because a lot of times we talk about what we want right i want them tall I want them handsome. I want them making money. I want, it's like, honey, listen, you can have some fantastic, fine brothers out here doing their thing and they will give you the biggest damn headache. And then you can have just the average dude, man, that will take care of you, care about you, be there for you, be consistent. You don't have to wonder where he's at. Is he telling you lies? But we don't want them though, because they don't ma they don't match. They don't match the tall, dark, and handsome. They don't match that. They only match they only match the uh you know for for the single women that are just struggling. No, there's a lot of good guys out here that are cool, calm, collect. They may not have the fantastic six or eight pack that we want so bad, but hell, they may be just what we need. Rather than trying to figure out, well, is this guy really going to be consistent? Is he going to tell me the truth or is he going to lie to me? And then gentlemen, y'all wanting the ladies, right? And some of these ladies don't care about y'all like that. The only thing they care about is your money. How much you're bringing in. Are you going to take care of her wants and her desires? Are you going to pay for her hair and nails to get done? They don't care about you, really. They only care about what you can give them financially, see? And then we're freaking like, this is ridiculous. I just want somebody they don't care about me. But we're going about it all wrong because we're basing it off of our horny. Well, I haven't had a man for a long time, so I want to have a person that I can make love to. Okay. But a lot of times, ladies, I hate to put it up, put you up on game with this, but you can want a man to be in your life and all that, and that's great and fine, but a lot of times you're making love to these men, and then guess what comes up? After you're making all that love to them, you're getting a lot of feelings. A lot of feelings. And then the next thing you know, you're like, damn, how did I get all these feelings for this person? Well, because you're having intimacy and sex with them. So guess what? Now you're horny and got you all cooped up with a person that isn't really into you all like that. They like you. They care about you. They may even be fond of you. But they're not trying to settle down and be your main, main person or, or your, your wife or husband or whatever. They're not trying to do all that. Oh. It's exhausting, man. Like, it's so exhausting. It's like, okay, 
being a wisdom coach, I'm constantly dealing with people that are frustrated by their situationships or their relationships or their marriages or whatever they are in. They're frustrated because they're like, man, at first everything was cool. You know what I'm saying? We had a lot of great love making. We had all this good fun. We were into each other a lot. And the next thing I knew, she stopped being into all of that. She started wanting to be with somebody else or she wanted to add people into the bedroom with us. And I'm like, what is this? I said, see, this is why it's so frustrating because when we allow our horny to make the decision, as to who our our life partner should be we find out that the person that we're loving so much may not be loving us see what i'm saying so you want to sit back and look and say hold on a minute i love somebody to just be there care give a damn not really give me a headache i shouldn't have to figure out if you're lying to me or not that's just ridiculous like why am i having to see if you're telling me the truth or not just basic, basic stuff there's no reason why i have to check up on and check back and see if you're lying or not that's too much listen if you're in a relationship or a situation or whatever type of relationship you're in if the relationship is topsy-turvy it's sometimes on sometimes off he's here sometimes he's not here sometimes i don't know if he loves me i'm not sure if she's with me all of that is too much so that person should not be promoted in your life to, to a full-time partner, period. That person should not be primary. They can be secondary. They could be, you know, on the books. If you get a little tired or, you know, or you get a little lonely or something, you want somebody to take up the space, that's cool. That's what you need in your life. But to make them and promote them up to primary lover and I want to marry him or I want to move him in my house, no, they ain't, they ain't worthy of that. Somebody that you cannot trust or cannot be truthful or cannot hell be at least upfront about who they are and what they're doing. Why would you promote them in your life? Don't do that. And a lot of times we do it and we're like, damn, why did I promote this person? And another thing, us ladies are guilty as hell as it, uh, of this is we often try to force it. We got to force a man to marry us. No, the fuck you don't. If a man really cares and really wants you to be in his life like that, you don't have to force a man to marry you. A man is going to evolve into wanting to be with you full time forever on, on his own. We don't have to be like, well, I've been with you for two years and um, like really, come on, what's taking you so long? We ain't got to do all that. See, this is where we mess up every time. And I am so guilty of that. What, what, hey, listen, uh, I'm not going to be here forever. What does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Like I was doing all that extra, making sure that I got married and I got to be in a relationship. And is he with me or is he not? And are you, are we together or are we not? F it. Let him, let it evolve to what it's going to be. If it's going to be full time and, and you two are primary in each other's life, listen, it don't matter. You don't have to say the words out. It's just what it is. That person will be in your, in your space in your home and never will leave period <laughs> it's just that simple but we make stuff so complicated us women are so bad with that we gotta have a ring we gotta have commitment we gotta have an answer are you with me or not are we together or not are we in a relationship or not come on i want to know it's like um i'm just trying to get to know you <laughs> i'm just i'm trying to see if we actually match I'm trying to give us time to grow fond of each other. Can we get along? Because listen, let me tell you something else that's really crazy. Because we can get into relationships with people and find out later on we don't even like the person. At all. Like, I don't even like you. <laughs> we were great lovers. We had everything going for us. We smile and, and chuckle with each other and had a lot of fun together. But hell, I really don't even like you. You're not somebody I would hang out with. At all. So... Why I picked to pro promote you as a number one or a primary lover or in love, a move-in relationship, what the hell was I thinking? Oh, it was my horny. That's what did it. So I, I was just so excited because I finally had somebody that was here full time. So because of that, he got promoted. But, it, it, but we never stopped to think, but are you being promoted? I'm just saying, a 
A lot of times we promote people and they ain't promoting us. Hmm. Right? So again, again, this is why, this is why I tell you guys all the time, being a wisdom coach tells a lot about what we're going through. And a lot of times we cannot sit back and really trust what we think or how we feel because a lot of times we don't really have a trustworthy heart with a lot of people. We don't. We say we, we, say we trust, but do we? Because a lot of times we carry over that old shit and bring it into the new relationships. And be looking at him like, mm, he says he's doing this and she says she's doing that. But you know, my old girl or you know, my old dude, he was extra. And I was constantly doing this and I was constantly doing that. But see, we can't let the horny make the decisions. What's up, Desiree? I see you. I'm going to, I'm going to respond to what you said. Give me just a second, baby girl. I appreciate you. So we sit back and we looking like, hmm. So that's what you want to do. You really want to be with me and all this stuff, but do you? Because see, a lot of times we get frustrated by infidelity, right? Who's he fucking with? Who's who's she with? Who's he with? Why are they doing this and why are they doing that? Hell, why are they doing them? Why are they doing that other person, right? We spend a lot of time on that shit. Listen, it don't matter. It don't matter. See, a lot of times... We will wrestle in our souls, worrying about who they're with and why they picked that person and what's going on and why they choose them. And she ain't even that good as me and he ain't even the shit and this dude, that dude, she is. We spend a lot of time on that, man. And a lot of times it's not due to a breakdown of the relationship they got with you. It's just due to their own appetite. Some of these people out here that we're trying to commit and promote just don't have monogamous feelings babies they don't they're not monogamous they're just not and it's okay that's just who they are they don't have monogamous traits and trust me coming soon i will be talking about monogamy trust me i'm telling you but i'm not going to give y'all the pretty of monogamy because let me tell you something about monogamy it is not easy nor is it ideal anymore because, do you know the poly pitch is going on right here? So many people are put, pitching the poly pitch. Poly this and poly that. Okay. Well, goddamn. I ain't from the poly community. So, it's a lot for me to understand. I can get it. But, uh, but outside of that, being in this environment now, I wasn't raised around a bunch of poly. I wasn't. That wasn't what I was raised under. Nor was I understanding of it. My, man, my parents was married to the, the, them part. All my aunts and uncles were married. Hell, one of my aunts and uncles just died together. They were in love with each other so much, they died a week apart. I mean, that's what I came up under. So it's hard for me to understand this poly stuff. But at the end of the day, ain't nobody talking about what monogamy really is. Because obviously, when I sit down and look at how, how many people are in these monogamous relationships, and I'm hearing so much stuff going on about infidelity, I'm like, well, why is monogamy and infidelity so hand-to-hand -hand all the time? Something's up with that. What's going on? What is up with this uh, con con contradiction? Oh, I want to be monogamous, but then I want to turn around and in my monogamy, I want to spend a lot of time trying to patrol my mate and see if he's faithful or not, or to patrol my girl and see if she's with me or not. That's not what monogamy is supposed to be about. Monogamy is a state. It's a state of being. It's a state of evolution. You either are or you're not. <laughs> but we try to make people be monogamous with us. And that's not how it works. What's up, Robin? That's not how it works. And see, we want to have relationships, right? You know, I get the most views when I talk about relationships. I'm just saying. But the problem is, a lot of times people don't sit back and really realize, oh, relationships are not hard, man. They're not. They're actually cool. If you get relationships that you can enjoy and, and want to evolve and to really caring about each other. But Lord have mercy. We can't get to that right now because so much stuff is going on. It's like all this drama. Listen, it ain't worth all that. What I want us to think about is we allow horny to just make the decisions. And get this, I am not somebody to tell you 
that it is unrealistic that you're horny or not because you know me i am a strong sexual person that will tell all of you exactly the importance of sexuality you should have a strong vibrant excellent sex life that's what you should have in your life period it brings about many beautiful things so i'm not telling you not to be but i am telling you that when you're sexually frustrated we make hasty decisions that may be against our interests, our primary goals, our interests is what we really need to have, need, what we really need to have in our life. But a lot of times we don't think about that. We only think about, well, I want, I'm horny, so I want to hurry up and get a man, or I want to hurry up and get a chick. I got to get this off. No, that's not how you want to do it. Because when you do that, oh, when you do that, you spend your time like, damn. I spent all this time trying to settle something down and I can't get it to where I want it to be. Listen, horny is what it is. It is what it is. We are all human. And if you're a human male or female, you're going to have moments of wanting to be intimate with somebody. It is what it is. That's just truth. Period. But we have to be mindful that our horniness can make us make poor ass decisions. And we're like, damn. I can't get this right for nothing. No, you have to learn how to manage your horniness. If you have somebody that you are intimate with, that you are having an intimate agreement with, or you're in an intimate relationship with, and it doesn't really intrude upon your peace, I'll put it that way, to the best of my ability, it's not intruding into your peace, then by all, all means, then let that roll. Now, you have to be mindful of is this person somebody that you will promote or not and that's what i was talking about earlier promotion of people that you're in a sexual relationship with needs to be deemed necessarily not on the sexual piece or even just about your horniness or how wonderful of a lover they are because that is not going to sustain the relationship on a long-term basis because guess what as we age Sex ain't as important. It's important right now. <laughs> Where we're at right now, look, I'm, hey, I hope to be 70 still getting mine. But I'm just saying, though, it could be that, uh, you know, it may not be as pertinent or as important to me at the time once I get in my 70s or in my 80s or my 90s. But hopefully, I'm putting it down, even on my 90s and in my 100s. I'm going to still be getting it in. That's what I pray for every day. I'm just saying. So anyway, without being facetious, you know, we got to make sure that it's more than just the sex piece. Because horny is great, but horny is not everything. We can't allow that to make the, fi the, 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 the finite decision on if somebody should be with you or not. That's not what you want to do, see. So you want to be mindful. Okay, what do I need in my relationship? You ready to think about that? <laughs> That's not easy. It's not easy to set aside the, the sexual desires to think about what your needs are. But we have to do that. We have to sit back and we have to start saying, hey, there are certain things I need that I that doesn't require me to be intimate with the person i'm with it just requires that i have an understanding and they understand me and there's a there's a, a certain amount of respect because see it doesn't always necessarily mean that the sex piece is not important because it is but outside of that what is even more vital is being honest with each other see if you remember earlier this week I posted up something very important I said I said you know if you're in a sexual agreement or a situation ship or a relationship or a marriage or whatever you're in and you start getting a taste for someone else you know go on and let that be known because it's only right to at least tell the person you're in a relationship with look I care about you I love you a lot, but listen, I got a, I got a newfound interest in somebody else. Because that then can allow the person you're in the relationship with to make their new choice. Because a lot of times what happens 
is you get the rug pulled up from underneath you. You're in a relationship, you're thinking everything's rolling fine, and then the next thing you know, your uh, intimate life that was hitting about, I don't know, four to five times a week is now done dwindled down to one time a week. You're like, what the hell is this? Oh, well, I'm tired, or I am i can't do it tonight, or I'm busy, or all kinds of stuff. And you're like, hmm, okay. You busy, huh? Hmm, okay. All right. And then you're like, this isn't adding up right. Something's up with this. This just isn't adding up right, right? And then when they, you finally figure out that there's somebody else in the mix here, and they're trying to juggle you and them or you and them and somebody else, you're like, man, that's why I'm getting dwindled down to one time a week. Well, what the hell? Now you find out, you clock out, you say, hey, I'm good, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm out of here, blah, 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 I'm cool on you, you was cheating, blah, blah, blah. and then what happens? Then you in a full-blown drought. You ain't got nothing now, because now you got to, you now got to figure out, what the hell am I going to do? I done been intimate with somebody, and now I'll be damned if my whole stock that I thought I had on the shelf is done. So now I got to figure out, what am I going to do? To at least be understanding that we're going to be sexually frustrated, but at least my sexual frustration won't be so damaging to my psychology, my psychological mind, my mentality, my heart, my soul. You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't have the courtesy to tell somebody something? You didn't have the courtesy to say, well, look, I'm interested in somebody else, so I might be dwindling back a little bit, or you know what I mean, or you might want to kind of meet somebody else. I'll let you know so that I can let you have your freedom. No, you want me to hold on to this sorry ass one time a week? What the hell am I going to do with that? And then I'll be damned, and then the one time a week is going to be one time every two weeks or every ten days. No, bro, that ain't going to work. See, I'm trying to tell y'all, man, we have to be honest with each other. And a lot of times we can't even give that courtesy because of why. Well, nine times out of ten, the one that's thinking that they're getting over on you and having a little extra fun on the side, they don't think that you are going to part ways from them. Because, of course, why would we do that, right? We don't want to disconnect from somebody that we're in a relationship with, right? Or, I'm sorry, in a situation with? Or do we? That's the risk. See, that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. So, like when I said on the t that post earlier this week, put your two weeks notice in. I had a lot of people posting on that. Like, oh wow, like yeah, give the person some time to find somebody else to count. I mean, damn, they're not trying to love. Obviously, you've been sleeping with them, so obviously there's somebody that somebody else is gonna want to sleep with. So why wouldn't you give them the common courtesy to tell them I'm interested in somebody else? I think two weeks. Is really not enough time but damn it at least get you to go on uh you know go out to the market or something go out to a couple bars meet some people go out and tell your girl something but these dudes and girls don't want to say nothing they just want to go out and just have a little sample you know what i'm saying juggle your time and now your time's dwindled down to nothing and now you feeling some type of way like well, what's this about what did i do to deserve this okay 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 so we gotta be mindful, man. We can't get we can't get caught up in the dumb stuff. We just can't. But I wanted to tell y'all that it's so important that we don't allow the horny to get us so misconstrued in the mind that we can't focus on what needs to be done. What needs to be done is we need to be honest. Honesty is more important than faithfulness. You know how many people take people back because of uh, infidelity? Infidelity is not the worst thing that can happen in a relationship. It's something that can happen that can kind of shift the relationship into a negative space for a while. But a lot of times people get back together. They work it out and they stay together and it's cool. So we got to get past that. Sometimes we got to think about some stuff. All right, Denise, I'll let you wait. You're so patiently waiting. I'm so sorry, love. Okay, Desiree, I'm sorry. Let's see what you said here. She says um, she wants to get to know the person and she wants to have someone to talk to. Uh, share her poetry, okay, go to your venues, live music, and dining, and etc. But masculine energies want to come to her house after a few days of conversation. Well, Desiree, because you're beautiful. <laughs> 
that's what it is. A lot of men don't want to do all that. They want to, you know what I'm saying? They want to, they want to indulge, you know, and it's hard because, you know, um, I, because I, it's like, I, I can't describe it, but the best way to put it, put you up on game, Desiree, is I am friends with a lot of men. My best description for you is that I have a lot of insight on the man perspective, perspective and the male perspective. I feel like, I am the younger sister of like 17 older brothers. Like I know so much stuff that I shouldn't and I just know. So unfortunately, because I have that knowledge, I just know that most men, they're not trying to just chill because they're so into, you know, getting so excited about you and seeing you and wanting you that they just be like, look, I just want to, I mean, the, the Netflix and stuff is cool, but I just want to touch and feel on you. That's just where they're at. And it's just where men are at. And it's so funny because it's just so, I can't describe it. It's tough. But again, it's it's really important that, you know, um, you just set your boundaries, man. And, 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 and those dudes that are just wanting to, <laughs> to be intimate with you, you just have to be, you know, you, you, the, you, the, I mean, basically you're the pilot of the plane. So, I mean, it's your call on what you want to do. But like I say, a lot of times we have sexual desires. We are human beings. So we're going to have desires to be sexual. Problem is a lot of times we don't want to talk about it, nor do we want to admit that we got desires. We got stuff we want to do. And, uh, you know, but we just haven't been taught like what to do or how to do it or how important it is to be intimate and having sexual arrangements with people. But the problem is we never mention about the feelings that come with it. And see, that's where, that's where the challenges come in. And a lot of times, you know, the challenge comes in because of sex and feelings and then love and complications. And then what are we? Well, I don't know. Well, I want a relationship. Well, I don't know. You know, it's just, it's a lot of back and forth. So it's, it's really tough. Um, Desiree, you also said that you're very comfortable with your strong sexual energy. Amen. And, um, and you, you, uh can't just share your soul with just anyone i get it and you love intimacy which isn't just about sex yes and you have trust issues most do and this is new but the world and the people in it are not what i am used to and that's um i'm not sure what wgdr is you gotta hit me up on that she says i'm at with i'm at i am with it I don't desire sex first and foremost, but he has to stroke my intelligence before he can just stroke anything else. I got you, Desiree. Nah, definitely. That's so fucking important. The important thing about it is <laughs> a lot of people don't realize that the in intimacy comes once you are engaging in a, on an intellectual, um, on an intellectual back and forth with each other. Um, because there is a bouncing off. There is an intrigue. For me, I love intelligent men. I love men to intrigue me and, and, and to, you know, basically put me up on game with intelligence. I love it. And I'm attracted to most smart men. That's just what it is. But the challenge is, it's like, okay, um, we can't just sit idly by and only want to have conversation. We are going to get to that point where we're going to want to be intimate. But again, we have to be the headhunters of what we want to do. And like I say all the time, because you obviously have, it, say, it seems to me, Desiree, you have had soul sex, which is what I talked about in my article. If you haven't read it, go check it out. Um, and soul sex is bittersweet, though, because soul sex is a sex where you are beyond the physical with the person you're being intimate with. And so when you're doing that, it comes a point where you're intimate with each other. And um, you're like, man, I just, I'm feeling something beyond just being sexual with the person. So because of that, you're like, wow, I didn't realize how much joy I'm getting from this person I'm with. So you sit back and you're like, okay, you know what? I can really truly be in a strong bond or a strong intimate relationship with someone and, and just be excited with it. But again we have to sit back and remember like i said we never ever think about 
what comes with the sex piece. What else comes with it? Feelings. And we don't master those at all. We have a horrible time mastering feelings because we could be doing good, right? <laughs> I'm going to put y'all up okay because I'm telling you, I have had my share, okay? Oh, I'm doing good, right? You know, I'm intimate, I'm cool, you know, I'm laid back, so I'm a chill chick anyway, so I'm not going to give you a lot of headache. But the next thing I know, I'm like, where the hell did these feelings come from? I wasn't planning on being um, all, all this with this person. I was just trying to have a good time, or I was just, I was just getting my, you know, getting mine off. I mean, I wasn't thinking about trying to get all hemped up and in feelings with this person, and now, bam, here they are. And you can't just shake them off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to figure out a way to manage them now. Now you're like, fuck. Now I done got my feelings all caught up in the shit. Now what am I supposed to do? Now I got to figure out how to manage them. So then you're managing them and you're trying to figure out, well, I'm not trying to be, you know, too much. I'm not trying to be too little. You know what I'm saying? I got to have something, but I can't be too much, too little. I'm, I don't know what to do. So what am I going to do at this point? So really, we never master our feelings because we're so caught up in the sex piece. And it's wonderful. Give me, I mean, I can't say it enough. It's a beautiful thing. But we constantly have a hard time trying to figure out how do we manage it. And see, like that's right, you, you know, again, it's hard. Um, but, I mean, once we get to the point where we start to have, I mean, a way to have intimacy, have a good freedom in life, and pursue what we're trying to pursue as far as our goals and things that would be cool but a lot of times we lose sight on what we want to do man because feelings get caught up in it it's like what am i supposed to do now i didn't know i was going to get all caught up with this i thought i was just going to um you know i thought i was just going to be intimate and be all right with it and now i'm intimate i'm all caught up in feelings with this person how did the hell did this happen i wasn't trying to do all that i was just trying to you know have my fun and sit down some damn way. But now I'm caught up with this. But again, we we have to sit down and really start to weigh, especially as women in our 40s, you know, um, we're vivacious, man. When we're in our 40s, man, we got the wisdom, we got the knowledge, and we took care of ourselves, we got the body, we're still pretty hot, we still got our, you know, our snazzy to us. We still could put it down if we need to. I mean, we got the, you know, we got what it is. That's not the problem. The problem is the cho the what the way we're allowing ourselves to get caught up with these fuck boys. They are. They will throw your beautiful, freshly relaxed hair into an afro, and you'll wonder what the hell was I thinking? I'm good. I'm good. Next thing you know, you're not good. And you're like, what was I thinking? What was I thinking, Lord? Why, Jesus, why? So we got to be mindful of this stuff, man. And if y'all are trying to get back into the dating scene, it's not easy. You have to do some serious research, homework. Do some intentional understanding of you first. Because we can't go out into this market right now. It's not like it was 10, 15 years ago. It's not the same market, honey. We got dudes that can be around your corner. I mean, a click of a button and they're on your Facebook page or they're in your inbox or whatever. Like that. We didn't have that kind of access like that when we were 15, 12 years ago, 10 years ago, matter of fact. So when we're going back out into the market trying to meet these new people, it's like, damn. I mean, it's like, whatever you want within minutes hell seconds sometimes and so you gotta sit back and be like what well damn okay what do i need to do we got to do the research if we're wanting to have intentional relationships and we're sick and tired of the situationships we're in or we don't really like what we're getting or we're getting enough but not quite as much as what we desire to have then we got to start making the different moves. We got to start making changes. We can't sit around and wait for the UPS guy to show up. Or see if we can see him over at the at the grocery store. 
and happen to bump into each other. That's not how this works. You know, it's not a lottery, honey. If we stop, if we start to really think about how intentional we can be with really getting precise on what we need in our relationships, not what we necessarily want, we can find ourselves in a better long-term relationship that stands the test of time. But a lot of times we don't look at it from that per perspective or point of view. We look to see what we like, what we see. These, you know, our eyes see, our eyes deceive us every time. There's some fine brothers out here. You hear me. Fine, I'm telling you. But they may not be what I need. I, they're what I want. But they cannot possibly, all of those fine brothers cannot possibly be what I need. You feel what I'm saying? So we got to be mindful. Like, oh, hold, hold on a minute. Yes, he's, you know, chocolate and all of that. Beautiful and, you know, all of that, all that handsomeness and all of that. Or they can be, you know caramel with the with the gray eyes and all of that fantastic it's like you can have so many array of physical things that we can be drawn into and get all caught up in and then be like oh i got sucked in and i cannot believe that i got sucked in like that it's like oh my god what was i thinking why why jesus whoo I'm just trying to help y'all, man. It's not easy out here. It's really not. But it's important that we really make sure that we don't get too caught up in just wanting somebody because of how good they make love to us. Not a good idea. Or making a decision about making somebody get a promotion in your life that isn't earning it. They're trying to juggle you and juggle somebody else or juggle some or juggle quite a few others and you're just getting penciled in what no they they don't get to have access to you like that that's when you start to make you got to start to draw the line like you know what if i'm getting penciled in then i'm gonna have to you know treat you accordingly i can't you know what i'm saying i can't be penciled in my my, my love that's not gonna work here I'm just saying. Um, Desiree, you say you do think about that's why I slow walk it and they do these extra things. Okay. And it's not the sex. I recently had a deep connection with the masculine energy and what got me was the mind candy. Oh, Lord Jesus. And I'm hungering for his mental mind candy, but I'm good. Sexually, my mind is famished. And yeah, I've heard about the fuck boys and dating. Ugh. Man, listen, they will throw your relaxer out. Do you hear me, Desiree? Out. You will have to go back next week and get another relaxer. It will be all sweated out. You'll be like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> You'll be like, I'm good. You'll be like, I'm good. I don't know if you saw that video with the woman walking with them high heels on and she was wiggling and that will be you. And you'll be trying to figure out what the hell just happened i was good all of a sudden i'm not so good i'm confused but a lot of times we don't talk about this stuff because there is a lot going on and a lot of people don't want to admit that what we got going on in this realm right now is a lot of um confusion a lot of um you know just a lot of deceit you know people trying to lie not being honest um you know, because I think, you know, like I said earlier, infidelity is one thing that can be very aggravating. But it's the lies that I think trumps that more than anything else. Be up front. Tell the truth. See, and, and a lot of times if they're lying, it's something they're hiding. What are they hiding from you? They're hiding something. They don't want you to know something. So whatever that something is, is, is being held back from you for a reason, right? So you got to wonder what that reason is. And a lot of times they don't want to tell you. So again, <laughs> it will, yes, Desiree, your whole relaxer will be gone. No more relaxer. For, I, I'm telling you, go back. You have to go back. You know you can't get your perm right away, but you're going to have to go back and get it. And you have to wear a wig for like a week because <laughs> they will sweat your whole hair out. Trust me. 
Listen, you gonna have to inbox me. I'll tell you some of my crazy ass stories. But yeah, I had I had a seven year run, and I call it my playgirl playgirl years. Seven years, a full blown fun, like seven years. I could just tell you that. I had every flavor, every man. Listen, I had so much freaking fun. But uh. Again, you know, <laughs> you cannot play around when it comes to sitting back and really paying attention to what is it that you really need versus what is it you really want. Because I had everything I wanted. I had all kinds of flavors and vanilla, chocolate, caramel, shit. I mean, butterscotch, all kinds of flavors, girl. I was on it. But when I sat back and looked at it, I was like, you know what? I'm thankful. I'm so glad I got that out my system. <laughs> you have to realize you have to be so happy that you got rid of it. It, it. it has to go. And 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 the thing about it is I was I was so young. I was like probably good. I don't know. I think I was in my thirties. No, I was like twenty seven. So I was just coming up out of my marriage, my ex my ex my first ex husband, so I was about 27 so I was coming up out of that you know that divorce dip and you know when you go through a divorce and you just go into a whole new found joy of you um I just I just had a ball <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's all I can say <laughs> without incriminating myself <laughs> but anyway like I said it was <laughs> you have yes Desiree you gonna die but like I said I had so much fun but at the same time we have to sit back and we have to look at okay what is it that we really need to be mindful of because now that I'm older and more seasoned you know uh trying to go back and throw back myself back into another seven um years of playgirl uh whoo I don't know if I could do it now. I mean, it's not that I couldn't do it. I put it that way. It's not that I couldn't do it. It's just that it would require uh, a different focus than what I got going on right now. And, and since I'm building and creating and, and constantly doing what I'm doing, it would be hard for me to just jump right back into the pool of Playgirl and just have a ball again. It's like, nah, you know, you gotta, you gotta sit. And, and trust me, I have moments where I'm like, you know what? But then I'm like, nah, don't, don't do that. That's that's too much. You got to kind of talk yourself out of it. But it, it, like I said, it's it's just a part of you that you just you as a woman. I believe all women should have their moment where they just they just have no holds barred and they just they get their freedom and they understand who they are as a woman. And and not and then not even just that, you just have a newfound understanding of how you are as a woman and what it is you desire to do in your life and once you understand that it's like you know i just know what i need and see a lot of times we don't know what we truly truly need we don't sit down enough alone and say what is it i need really do i really need somebody here full time or is it that i want somebody here full time do i really need somebody to be here um in my bed every night or do I want somebody in my bed every night do I need somebody to be in my life every day or do I want that so when I sit back and started asking those hard questions to myself the answers were kind of were kind of uh, very unique they were they were like oh okay I didn't know these are things that I needed to answer but here's the thing when you answer them, you need to do a check every year and ask yourself the same question. Is this what I need or is this what I want? And if it's what I, and then go deeper. If this is what I want, why? Why do I want this? Because a lot of times I don't think we really know why. Is it because of conditioning? Or is it because of a need 
that we have in ourselves because it's something we believe is the right thing to do. So is it a conditioning? Is it what we need? Is it what we really want? These are all things we got to sit back and think about. It just takes us time. It takes us time, man. We just have to sit back and look at ourselves and really get to know what it is we need. Yeah, see, that's where you had that time to see, you know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure it will be definitely similar. Absolutely. And it's funny because, like I said, you have to have that. But at the end of the day, I mean, when you know your value, when you know your worth, when you know the power you have as a woman on the planet, and you really truly are excited about being who you are, there's no question that you don't hesitate about the power of what we have as women. We have so much capability, so much power as women that we don't even realize we have. And then not to mention, outside of that, we have some goals that we need to be you know, striving to achieve. And when we strive to achieve those goals, it's like, wow, I didn't know I had this in me. But we have, like I said, we have to sit back. What is it as a woman? What is it, what is it as a woman that we need? Because there's a lot of things okay a lot of men that i would love to want on all day all night and he looks good and he smells good and he's a nice guy and i mean just you want to want on him all day but is he what you need though and that's the challenge so we have to sit back and we really have to ask ourselves that hard question what is it that we need in our life from a man that we want to promote as primary what is it we need and is, is this man or is this gentleman able to provide that? And then gentlemen, you need to ask the same question. What is it with the women you're deciding to be with? What is it that you need? You know what I'm saying? And can a woman truly give you what you need based upon what it is you need inside? See, these are things we got to ask ourselves. And I tell I, I, the guys that I coach all the time, I tell them all the time, you guys need to know. Besides sexual needs that you're desiring, outside of that, what do you need in a relationship? We as women oftentimes don't know what we need sexually. We know what we need emotionally and financially, but we don't know a damn thing about what we need sexually. Well, that's because we've been conditioned in this society not to even focus on our, on our sexual needs as women. We're not, we're not, this culture is not cultivated to encourage us to know what we need sexually. So we're not even taught that. Women. Men, you guys all day know what y'all want. But we as women, we're like, we don't know what the hell we want. Hell, just, <laughs> we figure it out as we go. Now, gentlemen, you guys don't know what you need in a relationship outside of the sex piece. So, gentlemen, you need to know what is a woman bringing to the table. I always tell my men that I coach, I tell them this, very specifically. A woman should be bringing you life period if she's not bringing you life then she has no business being in your life and what i mean by life i'm not talking about gifting you a baby because of course all women can do that most of the time but i'm talking about what is she gifting you in your life what is she giving you as a woman because we as women we got nothing but life to give a man we have all kinds of encouragement we can give you we have all kinds of understanding we can provide to you and all kinds of things but if that woman is just a bump on the log She's not really giving you anything other than a great sexual hump at night. That's not a woman you promote in your life full time. You can get that for free. Hell, you might even be able to buy it, but that might be illegal for you. <laughs> I'm just saying. What's up, Dave? So, hey, you got to sit back and look at this stuff. You got to be honest with each other. What is it I need in a relationship? We all want one, right? At least we want somebody that cares right we would like to have somebody to be primary and would like to have someone to call our own but again like i said in this society we're in now whew, it ain't like it used to be you know um it, it's definitely different it's, a, it's not the same it's not all about um having a monogamous relationship nor is it really about having um a full-time partner it would be nice to have that but a lot of times it's not that you know what i'm saying so it's like well okay whatever 
So listen, guys, I, I know I've been talking for a while, but like I said, I just wanted you guys to get this, man. It is powerful to understand, but I wanted you guys to understand, man, when, when we sit down and we really, really pay attention to our sexual needs and our relationship needs, we, we can sit back and say, you know what? I don't have to have everything. But damn it, I need to have what my needs are met. And then, when you get things that you need, and, you're, and, and, and you begin to get the wants also, you start to think, well, damn, I'm hitting, I'm batting a thousand here because my needs are being met, and plus I'm also getting some needs, I mean, getting some wants also thrown in there. Now you're getting somewhere. So I'm out of here, guys. Go over to my YouTube channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, it's Carla Nicole Wisdom Channel. I talk a lot about intimacy. I talk a lot about that. Um, I talk a lot about relationships over there. So go over there and subscribe to my channel, man. I work hard on it. Um, and also, I have a wise mini course out right now called Awaken Your, Your Gifts. So get over there and get your buns over there and take my course called Awaken Your Gifts. And I just now posted this morning um, how to shake your alone hate because a lot of people are miserable being alone. And you don't have to be miserable alone. It just, it's, it's a way to um, remedy your, uh, your loneliness in your life. So go over there and take that course too. It's already up. I just put it up this morning. So you guys go over there and take it. I worked hard on it for you guys so you can guys take it and just and run with it all of these things i'm gifting you guys so that you guys can get have a better more fulfilling more beautiful life than what you have and listen every day we are here we are should we, we should be thankful for every breath we take because you know no breath is promised every breath is a gift so we got to take it and enjoy it and while we're here let's make those breaths count because <laughs> i'm telling you for someone who who knows for sure that um, when these breaths in, man, you want to make sure you made a difference on the planet. I'm just saying. So I'm out of here, guys. I love each and every one of you. So glad that you were here. Make sure you share this video. It's so important. Somebody's got to hear it. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept. Have a great night, guys. Bye.